Bang Bang! Welcome to the party, bang bang! It's your man Clay Tron, aka the Big Boss Man, aka the Clumsy Jeweler, because I'm always dropping gems. Aka the Milkman, because I always deliver. Aka the PhD of podcasting, the Magnum PI of podcasting, the Gavin Wanganine of podcasting, that Port Powell podcasting, baby, yes! Today we are having Xavier Dersma on the show. Uh, friend of the show. He's been on twice already. Uh, this, this show is for guest of the year 2020. Um, and you know, he was the winner, but, uh, with COVID and, you know, all of the stuff, it's been, it's just been hard to schedule getting him back on. So he's getting on about, you know, a week before we start voting on <laughs> guest of the year 2021. So, you know, we got him in, in this year at least, you know, and he, he's got, he's getting a chance to back it up. We'll see what happens. Uh, but before, before we get into that episode, we've got some shit to run through here. You know how it is. It's me, boss man. I'm back. Board man's not in here today. So board man doesn't get paid. You know, board man doesn't get paid. (laughs) But, uh, dude, my dog, Gigi, you all know her. She got dissexed this week, dude. She got sexed and um, she she's a bit sad. She's a bit sad today. She has been moping around. She's still a bit sedated, I think. Um, you know, she just had she just had breakfast and she's she's feeling good. But don't I went to I went to the effing vet and uh, when I go to drop her off. The, the veterinary nurse, she says, oh, how long ago was she on heat? And I was like, oh, I don't know, like maybe a couple months. She was like, do you know the date? And I was like, no. Uh, when she was on heat, I called and said, when she finishes this cycle, can we get her in f- to get to sex? And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll book it. Blah, 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 blah. They booked it for the day I took her in. And then and then I get in there and she's like, how? and I'm like, this is what happened. I told them that she was on heat and they booked it for this, that, and oh, well, the vet um, that you're with wants it to be a, at minimum 13 weeks. And I was like, yeah, I guess it's that long. She's like, it, ne- it needs to be certain. I was like, well, check when it got booked. Check when I called. Oh, we, we actually can't do that. I was like, well, why would they book me in that, like, within the time frame? Oh, well, it's just this vet's preference. I was like, so people can do it less than 13 weeks? It's just this vet's preference. Oh, like, hey, look, I called up and booked this shit when she was on heat. So that was someone's responsibility to know the, the length of time, right? Two, someone called me yesterday to confirm this shit and didn't mention nothing about this. So why am I here right now? I'm saying this. I'm saying no, there's no other customers, right? So I'm, I'm like getting a little bit loose-lipped. Right? I'm like, so why am I here right now then? Why am I here right now? She went out the back. And talk to the vet. She's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, uh, it's all good, all good." You're gonna get spastic with me, and then it's just all good. Anyway, so I started my day yesterday. I also got a blood test right after that. I went from the vet to the human doctor, got a blood test to check my vitamin D levels because I haven't been in the sun that much. And because when I'm in the sun, because I'm fat now, I wear I wear t shirt, and even when it's hot, um. I don't look good in a t-shirt anymore. I look fat. So I've been wearing jumpers, dude, sweating. Uh, so that's not dope. So I went to go check my vitamin D level. So I haven't heard back yet because that was, you know, 24 hours ago. But yeah, that's that's what's been cracking, bro. Getting my my D checked. <laughs> um, what else? Nothing. This week's been real, real low key, man. Been writing new jokes and shit. Um, let's do some, let's do some Clay's reviews, uh, real quick. I've just got a few to get through. We'll try and bang these out as quickly as possible. Comedy action horror, will this movie win an Oscar? Set design, directing, acting, like or costumes. This segment is Clay's reviews. All right. Um, 
what do we got? So we got Crashing. TV show ran about three years, three seasons. 2017 it started, uh, you know, written, created by uh, stand-up comedian Pete Holmes. And um, he's, yeah, he's basically, he's he goes through a divorce. You know, first episode, he, you know, him and his wife have a problem. They, he's gone through a breakup and he's basically bouncing around on different comedians' couches, crashing, um, as he tries to become a stand-up comedian. And there's, yeah, pretty much every episode, there's sort of a new cameo from a different comedian. And it's really cool, man. It's fun. It kind of gives some insight into the industry, um, albeit, you know, he becomes like a legit comedian in a matter of like 12 months where um, in real life it takes about 10 years um, as a, you know, as an estimate. But no, it was it was cool, man, and um, yeah, a bit a bit of inside baseball and all that kind of shit. Cool kids tables and that shit. So, uh, crashing seven point five out of ten. Then I watched this film called Life, um, with Robert Pattinson, and he's he's this photographer trying to get um a a photo essay in Life magazine. And his subject is James Dean. I I didn't think the guy really looked that much like James James Dean. The whoever whoever played him. No offense, you know. Like I thought, you know, no no home loans. I thought um, James Dean was way hotter than this dude. But you know, whatever. Uh, and I didn't like. You know, I I actually kind of enjoyed the story to be honest. But I did not like the way it was shot. And I. Hated the score, bro. Hated it, dude. It started playing all this dark, sinister music, just like in between conversations that weren't even dark. It was just so wild. Like I don't know who was making choices, bro. But wrong once, wrong once. Uh, so that gets a six out of ten. And then I watched three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Frances McDormand, I think, got an Oscar for this and she deserved it. And she was a fucking bad cunt in this, man. She went out there fucking out for vengeance, bro. She, her um daughter got um raped and murdered and she and there was no arrests made and she was like, I'm about to fucking light a fire up somebody, you know? And she she was like, I want, you know, vengeance or revenge. And those are two similar words but they're different. Uh, so, yeah. she She's basically in this small town, Ebbing, Missouri, Missouri, and she puts up these billboards um, out there uh, calling for justice, calling out the police department, and, you know, people, people start to, um, you know, get mad at her the police department's mad at her and then the town's mad at her and then the son's mad at her for you know he has to be reminded of his sister's death every day that they drive by these billboards and all this shit and dude honestly it was a roller coaster bro ups and downs and roundabouts dude um i got a bit choked up my stomach was in knots um, I was ready to shed a tear, but I think I might have been dehydrated, so nothing really came out. But I was, um, I was sad at at points, and I laughed at points. They were really good at mick, you know, intertwining tragedy and com- comedy, dude. They really, yeah, were very well written dialogue, bro. Very complex characters. I loved it. Um, eight point five out of ten. And let's go to sports. And I told you motherfuckers we were going to shorten up that sports riff because we've been sitting here for years now listening to that other one. The amount of time you've you've probably spent at least two hours listening to me not talking and just the sports intro um, over the course of the year's that we've been listening to the show. And now I've finally shortened it after last week. 
So we're, we're back. We're into sports. Now, recap from last week. Um, the, the battle for dads, uh, the battle for divorce dads day, that triple D. Uh, I'm not going to explain what that means again. You can go back to last week's episode to figure out what that is. Uh, but Lavelle and I picked four games each and we actually, we ended up being three, 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 three. We both got one game wrong. So Lavelle got to pick first again this week. That's board man. Um, for anybody that don't know, that's bored. <laughs> but uh, so he, because last week was the first week we'd played rock, paper, scissors for first pick. He won. Uh, and then it was a draw this week. So he he just gets to go first again. He picked uh, the 76ers over Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, and then I went and I picked Atlanta over Cleveland. He picked Dallas over Houston. I picked Boston over Houston. Um, he picked the Lakers over the Thunder. I picked Milwaukee over Indiana. He picked Phoenix over Sacramento. And I picked Atlanta over Detroit. Now, usually we would break down like sort of why we're doing these picks, uh, what we've seen the week before. But since he's not here, I'm not going to just do my side of it. So we're going to keep it short and simple. I will tell you this. There has been some um, talks of a, an investigation and story being launched on the owner of the Phoenix Suns being a racist, homophobe, um, really a bit of a, you know, big big fat cunt. Um, and yeah, man, uh, he could be getting ousted. He could be getting thrown out of the league. Um, so board man and I are going to put some cash together, see if we can get some ownership of the Phoenix Suns coming up. Uh, because you know, we, we, we fucking, we, we want to be owners. Easy money. We want to, we want to be getting that cash. You know, we want to be stacking them chips. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Do do we want it under these circumstances? Um, the answer to that question is yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'll take it however it comes. No, Cuomo, bro. All right. Sensation. Um. Well, that's it. I think that's all I wanted to get off my chest. Uh, today, Lavelle and I, Boardman and I. Uh, we're supposed to uh, do the NBA awards as well, like Defensive Player of the Year, MVP, all that shit, and we forgot. He's not in today, so we'll do that next week. We'll have a bit more of an idea after what uh, we've seen so far. Look, um, my early pick before the season started was Jason Tatum. Uh, I think Boardman said Luca, but uh, if you guys haven't seen what Steph Curry... Jeez. Anyway, I love how hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We've got uh, Xavier Dersma here from the Port Adelaide Power. We're going to talk about the off season, um, you know, play a game uh, and get yeah, get through some stuff here, man. So please enjoy the show. Uh, and please don't forget to rate and review five stars. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit that share button. Enjoy my friend, Xavier Dersma. Girl, you know I love you, ain't disrespect whenever I'm tardy Walking around with a shopping cart, we tearing down Barney Oh, girl, I want So what's plans, what's plans this off-season? Um, oh, look, I've got, I've got a whole lot, really, that we've got going on I've been trying to just get, um, go to the gym a bit Yeah I've went to Perth to see my girlfriend over there, and I'll probably go back there um, next week on Wednesday. She lives there. She lives there. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, maybe go for another small little holiday with Hazy. Yeah. Maybe up to Palm Cove, I think, um, late late October, early November. Yep. And then from there, just just trying to train and uh, and get and get ready, for, like keep myself in some half decent shape, ready for free seasons. Because yeah, yeah, I want to come in, and I think this year's a very important year. Um, yeah, because I think since since last time you came. You had the knee injury. Yeah, I think yeah. I was watching. I think I was watching that game actually. Yeah. That didn't didn't look good from the. Like, no, it was nice, that nice big scar there on my knee. Yeah. yeah, so it's a it's a solid one. Had a uh, hamstring tendon was fully was fully ripped apart. My uh, lateral ligament was done. 
meniscus tear uh, and a bit of cartilage damage. So Fuck, a, did, did a fair bit. Yeah, I did a fair bit in there. So it was a, it was a solid um, solid little uh, reconstruction that they did of it. I, I was just very lucky in the end that it wasn't my ACL. So. Yeah, how long How long was the recovery from uh, I think I was out. I, I missed 17 or six, 16 or 17, no, maybe 15 weeks. So I did it around four and I think I got back by about around 19. Or, wow, that's which that's is really, really good. Yeah, which is really good. For, like a lot of people... Apparently said that, like a lot, not not internally at the club, but a lot of people from outside said that that'd be his season done, and mm. um, it looked like you know that was that'd be it for him. But um, you know, I worked I worked pretty incredibly hard to try and get myself back. Yeah. And obviously, I didn't. I still just wasn't playing my best footy, and I, it's hard to come back and and feel really strong on my knee. And I still my quad wasn't as big and strong and and stuff like that, so I didn't feel as good as I did. And you're previously. right for that. I'm right yeah, as well, so, so it was my proper my kicking leg and everything. Yeah, so. feel feel a bit funny kicking. Yeah, it feel, felt a bit funny kicking the yeah. first few weeks that I was trying to get back, but um, yeah, I did. In the end, I did did a pretty good job of getting it back, and the fitness staff at the club did a really good job of helping me and, and the phys- you know, physios and everything. So, did you have to come good. over uh, overcome any mental barriers like um, like when you started sprinting, when you started kicking? Was yeah. it was it tough to like give it everything? Yeah, it was. Like, I mean, I didn't really didn't have a lot of confidence on it again. It took me a while. I've, I've really felt weird when I first, my first running steps again, when I f- first did a jog, it felt, felt like I was, oh, it was, it was the weird, one of the weirdest like feelings I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had, I had little niggles here and there. I thought I did a, uh, I had, I, sorry, I had a, uh, a small quad tear in there as well. Oh, right. Um, as uh, I think at about week, week 10 or something like that, which set me back another two weeks. Um, just with that alone, and then there was all kinds of like, you know, I felt like when I had that 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 quad tear as well, that was a real barrier for me. Is thinking, you know, like, my goodness, like, am I, am I ever gonna get back? All yeah. this type of stuff. Like, I'm like, I'm. I was racing against time, making sure I could get back to play finals because obviously we were still going quite yeah. well the year. You know, we had a little bit of a dip midway, but um, in terms of like, you know, we were still in a really good spot to play finals and stuff. So yeah, I was really excited to try and get back in there. It's just didn't know if that was gonna be. It was just a big, big up and down. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you guys sort of. What? When did you get knocked out? The uh, twenty twenty season. Yeah, that was the twenty twenty season. Got knocked out. Uh, the uh, sorry, not the prelim, the qualifying final. Okay, so a little bit further this year. Yeah, maybe the whole way next year. Yeah, that's yeah. all. That's all I'm hoping. Is, yeah, uh, a full clean year. Yeah, uh, and hopefully, you know, it's a really good year as well. I'm going to try and play a bit more midfield. Okay. Um, try and try and push in there as well. Got a got a lot of work ahead of me. You know, to try and break into our midfield with some amazing players in there already. So when do you guys go um go back to work? Uh we start so end of November, mm-hmm. uh, twenty seventh or twenty ninth of November, something like that. Yep. Uh, and we go back into it then, uh, and just gonna try and do everything I can to get nice and strong. Maybe put on a few kilos here and there, but obviously still try to keep my my running, which is one of my weapons. So yeah. Try and keep my, um, you know, my fitness and still be, hopefully try and be more powerful and stronger so I can break tackles and break lines a bit more, which yeah. is what I'll try and do. And I feel like I can definitely bring that to to the team. I think, you know, I think the team is already, uh, and the coaches and coaching staff is looking for me to, to hopefully make that step. And that's really what I want to try and do because I feel like I can actually bring that to the team and help us win. Yeah. So... I was talking to um, this comedian the other night, Paul Paul Young. He's a he's yep. an older guy, but he he used to work with the Crows as a sprint coach. Yep. Um, I think I think it was in between. No, it was over the time of Neil Craig and um, someone else. But anyway, so he was talking about um, yeah, just like learning to run and the technique yep. and how much speed that you can add just. Just from doing that, have, yeah. you, have you ever done any of that kind I of have, work? So, I, funnily enough, when I was um, about sixteen and seventeen, oh, actually, so my uncle is a sprint coach. Oh wow! So he he's like a, he's an athletics coach in general, but he specialises in high jumping and sprinting. Yep. Um, and his name's David Green, uh, and he's he, he actually coached uh, an Olympic athlete, um, Eleanor Patterson, the high jumper. She okay. Before before she went across back to the AIS. Um, so he actually took her to the Olympics in 2016 and the um, Commonwealth Games in 20, uh, 2018 as well. Yeah, wow. Um, and, and like you know, he's a he's an excellent coach and, and you know very well well known um, around Victoria and and for most of athletics I think around Australia he's, he's quite well known. Um, and he's yeah. So he, I did a bit of sprint sprinting work with him because when I started when I grew from, so I was really quite small. Uh, I was small and skinny like my whole whole life really. 
up until about maybe when I turned 13 and 14 as I had a bit of a growth spurt. And then throughout that time, between about 14 to 17, I really like got a bit lanky and, and like lost a bit of my coordination and then also lost a bit of my speed, which I had when I was a bit younger. Yeah. I've got it back now, which I'm still back to back to being pretty fast and um and you know pretty speedy. But who's um, the who's the fastest on the team? Ryan Burton or Connor Rosie, I think. Yeah, Rosie. Yeah, yep. Connor Rosie or, or or Ryan Burton. Are you up there? I'd be up. Yeah, probably. Yep. I'd probably be up there. I don't know exactly where I'd be, but I'd be up there somewhere. You guys don't. You guys don't test each other out. Like, Not really, like because no? you're never really doing too many sprint yeah. races and stuff. You might do a bit of sprinting in the warm up just to get yourself going, but yeah. A lot of people, you know, they're not taking it, not taking it oh, too dude, seriously. Like, no one yeah. wants to do hammies and stuff, and yeah. like especially because it's warm ups. Especially as well. fucking around, yeah. You don't want to do, you don't want to do the hammies and stuff in warm ups because you know that's. And you guys, <laughs> you guys are all that long distance game. Yeah, it's it's middle and long distance. I remember stuff, doing yeah. my um, uh, like I tried out for a few teams. Paul wasn't one of them. Yep. But yep. um, like three Ks isn't isn't that far. Like you don't have to be a you know super athlete or yep. something to run three Ks, but. I was, you know, in my prime basketball yeah, wise. It's a different, it's a whole and different. Just isn't it? like different, I was isn't it? running these, I don't remember what kind of times I was running, but they had it's like just, yeah, they had like these different. old coaches running with me, like fucking go on. I yeah, was like, <gasps> I just couldn't, I couldn't yeah. do it. No, it's it's a it's a completely different. Uh, like you know, obviously, this basketball and footy does translate with spatial awareness, all yeah. type of stuff. You always hear the commentators and stuff. They break they. They drag on about it all the time about you know Scott Pimmerby being a basketballer and this yeah. type of stuff, but like it, it does it does certainly translate and there is lots of crossover skills. But yeah, it's just like in terms of fitness, AFL seems to demand a lot higher in terms of the endurance stuff. Whereas yeah. you guys with much much more that that burst and absolute yeah power like power athlete type of stuff. Yeah, and you definitely stuff. get you definitely get a few Ks up in a basketball game. Oh, but yeah, it, you yeah, know it obviously it's over it's over forty eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's yeah. not a three K yeah. time trial, but. Um, yeah, sorry, your your, your uncle, um, yeah, yeah, coaching you for speed, and so did yeah. you did you like do track and field in high school or anything? Yeah, so I did I did all of my athletics growing up. I was I did athletics. I was more I was yeah more a uh, middle distance and, and jumper type of type mm. of thing, and still probably am now. Yeah, that four hundred and eight hundred, and then a bit of high jump and triple jump were my probably my best events. And then as I kind of got to like eight, seventeen, eighteen, that's when I started to get my speed back after working with. My uncle David for quite a bit, just a lot on technique, yeah, and just practicing my good good technique, and that helped me kind of progress back to getting stronger and and, and running faster again, which you know I, by seventeen or eighteen I was back to being a pretty decent sprinter, yep. making states and stuff like that. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Um. Now, you you like a bit? We're, we're drinking um young blood crystal ale. Yeah, at the moment. sorry, I was to say yeah, 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 yeah. So. You you're a bit of a wine guy. Yeah, I do like yeah. like a bit of wine. I, I like most of it, most alcohol in general. I yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm not too much, not too fussy when it comes to all of it. But yeah, um, yeah, I do like wines. Probably my probably red wines my favorite. You fancy yourself a bit of a wine connoisseur? I'm not. No. So, no? so he, what I'm trying to progress into into a connoisseur. Yeah. But at the moment, I just enjoy it for what it for the drink that it is. Yeah. I can kind of tell. I can I can tell the difference between a good one and a bad one. Yep. But I can't. I can't. I couldn't tell you that the entire difference, but like a floral taste or a, yeah, you know, the, the tannins and all, all, all this type of stuff. I need to learn the differences about it all. But yeah, I just enjoy wine just just for what it is. It just I think it tastes really good. And because someone it. someone on the team has their own wine, don't they? Yeah, um, they had in twenty twenty. We had Justin Westhoff has his own, and then Brad Ebert and Tom Ebert. Jonas have their yeah. have their joint one that they have together. So yeah, they. They are they are they're wine connoisseurs. Wine, sure, wine wankers, I call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll probably turn into one of them one day. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I do do enjoy it. Well, I think we played. I don't. I think we missed it one of the times. You've been on the show twice. Yeah. Yep. Um, one of the times I think we've played we've played a game for for charity. Yep. And I've got one. I've got one for you today. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. it's called what do I call it? A oh, wine sweeper. Wine sweeper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I've got five questions for you. I yep. think. Um, last time I think we played for um, Vinny's. Is that who you want to play for today, or do you have someone else in mind? Um, geez, it's a good question. What about the, a good animal charity that I was that I had the other day? I was thinking of one of the, one of the um, Ricky Gervais was had he like kind of. A bit of stuff for them, I think, like animal, okay. anti-animal oh. cruelty or something like that. 
King Gervais. I'll, that, I'll Google yeah, it. And yeah, we'll, I'm sorry that I've forgotten. It that's all right. I'll put it in the um, I'll put it in the uh, episode description. Yeah, no Ricky worries. Gervais charity. We'll call it Ricky Gervais charity for now. No worries. Um, let's go. First off, before we play, you um, the reason we got you back on is a bit late in the year and strange time to announce it. But you won. You won 2020. Um, guest of the year. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought I did, which is a pretty pretty prestigious award to yeah. kind of win. So I think you're only the second winner, so I think we did 2019. Yep. Um, so, yeah, you're the winner for 2020, and we've yep. got, got some gifts wow. for you. <laughs> Looking so, forward um, to this. I don't know, let, let me see which one I want to give you first. Yeah, this one. So open open that up. Maybe <laughs> maybe show show the camera what's in there. <laughs> wow, hey, that is... Uh, that is incredible. Championship camera, ring for the well. The camera can see. There's the, uh, there's the four. No. Oh. oh no. <laughs> the camera can see. That is, uh, that's pretty incredible. Uh, we've got the winner here. It's got, what's it has? This is uh, pretty. It's got some details this, on there. This is pretty good. Guest of the year. Here we go. Guest yep. of the year. This is some pretty nice details. So the camera can see that. It's got guest of the year there uh, on the ring, as well as uh, number seven. Which is uh, and and Xavier Dersma there for twenty twenty uh, with the Port Adelaide Port Adelaide logo there and my number number seven. So uh, that's that's a <laughs> that's a pretty bloody good one. I'm, I'm <laughs> that is uh that's pretty damn nice. Yeah, you that's got to stick incredible. that one on the gram because oh, that's uh, that's I'll be giving that a nice shout out. That's, <laughs> that's pretty bloody good. And then there's a there's a little backup here as well. So this one's just all um, black and silver. Wow. So it's just the same thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of giving is, myself guest of the year, yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> you give yourself that because that's awesome. That's uh, I'm, I'm pretty lucky to, to be – I'm very honoured to be guest of the year. This is pretty bloody cool. Uh, yeah, so for everyone that's watching, just make sure – if you ever do get to be guest of the year, cherish it because that's – that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Thank yeah, so we'll much. see we'll see how you go today, and you might even you might even get guess the year twenty twenty one. We'll see see how the voting goes. See how voting goes, but yeah, wow, that's uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That's well, incredible. Thank yeah. you very much. The mate. people the people got around you. It was a landslide victory, as as it was in twenty nineteen as well. It, it, who, it always, who won twenty nineteen? Uh, her name's Brianna Bowley. Brianna Bowley. Yeah. Uh, and she she is like a sort wow. of a um co- like a not a life coach. It's like a what is it? Like a mental coach yeah. for athletes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like a yeah. like a yeah, professional development type of yeah. like in a business terms, but like for athletes. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think she does businesses as well. As well. But yeah. yeah like but in- she really enjoys the athletes. She likes fighters. She yeah. likes yeah. Okay. So she um I mean And one by a landslide as well. She sicked the dogs on him. It was it was tight. It was her and this this guy Marcus, a friend of mine who's a film director. They were at about 800 votes each. Really? Um, and it was, yeah, it was looking really tight. And in the last three days, she got up to about 3,000 votes. Oh, wow. And Marcus got up to about 900. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, there's a, there's, there's a big, there's a big, dis- yeah. Yeah. in the end, there's a big. Yeah. Yours was, yours yeah, right. was uh, pretty quick. Uh, it it pretty became pretty clear who was going to win it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all right. And I'm glad I, glad I won in the, yeah. easy in the end. No. Yeah. So, um, for that, so that, for a guest of the year, $100. We'll go to this Ricky Gervais charity. Yep, sounds and good. And then uh, we'll you. add we'll add a little bit as well, depending on how you go in this um in this game here. Right, jeez, I don't. What do I expect? I'm not sure what to expect. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, well, I don't I don't know what you. It's wine sweeper, so it's, it's gonna rely on your wine knowledge. So you might you might win nothing, but you've got you've already got a hundred dollars going to it. Okay, so I hope, yeah, and a hundred bucks going to the charity. That's a good thing. And I did try to research this as much as I, I'm not a wine guy, so right. I had to do a bit of research to try and figure this out. And um, I could be wrong. So if you wanna um, if you wanna appeal any decisions, yeah, <laughs> let yeah. me know. Throw the challenge flag. Um, all right. So question one: What type of French wine is typically made from Pinot Noir grapes. Pinot Grigio? Incorrect. Oh, Burgundy. Yeah. Burgundy. Burgundy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't know that one. All right. <laughs> Not a good start. <laughs> Over one. Let's go. We've got five. We've got five questions. Yep. Question two. What is the most widely planted grape in the world? Jeez, that's a good question. Uh I don't even. I don't, I'm not even sure. No, I'm not, <laughs> have a stab. Just uh, I'll just say. Uh, 
I don't know, but the seedless grapes. No, go. no, no, no. So oh. it's like a wine, a, a wine, wine. wine. Okay, yeah. Wine, so wine. You just like name a wine. I was gonna say, is it a trick question? <laughs> no, maybe, no, no, it no. Might be, so. might be the seedless grapes. Yeah. So you're getting <laughs> getting coals and bullies yeah, and stuff. Yeah, your GMO. No, um, oh, I, I just have, I don't even know. I just have a burgundy. Just no, no, cab yeah. sav. Cab, cab sav. sav. Okay. Um, this one, this one's um, what's it called? Multiple choice. Okay. Multiple choice. Question three. What is Australia's most important, I've written here, I don't know yep. if I mean important or imported. Imported, yep. Could be, could be either. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see <laughs> in know. a second. Yep. This might be a, an appeal. Yep. Um, what is Australia's most important wine grape? Um, a, Shiraz, B, Merlot, or C, Chardonnay? I know that especially in, in South Australia, there's a lot of Shiraz. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure in terms of the rest of because I I'm going to go with A I think correct yeah I correct. know there's a lot of Shiraz especially in McLaren Vale uh, and also um, yeah I'm just I know there's another ones all around Adelaide and McLaren Vale and Adelaide Hills and then yeah. Rosser as well and there's quite a lot of Shiraz and Adelaide uh, South Australia is probably the biggest wine region in Australia maybe or I the, think it would have maybe to the be. most Popular, no, pop, most popular. I think yeah. it's known Adelaide, Adelaide and, and South Australia is known yeah. for its wine. So it has to, I think it would have to be, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yep. All right. It's got one. Okay. One out That's of three. We've right. got one. Uh, the next two are multiple choice as well. Okay. How much wine is in a standard bottle? A seven hundred and fifty mils. B eight hundred mils. C one liter. Ah, uh, seven fifty. Yes. I know that much. Correct. <laughs> I know that much. Seven fifty is a standard bottle of wine. <laughs> A standard pre-drinks for yeah. Xavier Dersma. <laughs> um, and question five, how many grapes does it take to make a standard bottle of wine? Yep. A, 200, B, 500, C, 800. I'm pretty sure that it is, is it 500? 200. 200. 200, yeah. 200, yeah. Right, so 200 grapes per bottle on average. Yeah. On average, right. Well, okay. I'll, I'll tell you what. I, so I've two out of five. That's not that good. But two out of five. We'll go 40 bucks. So 140 bucks. 140 bucks. To Ricky oh, Gervais's charity. We'll do some Googling and figure out what charity that is. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to an interview of you on Hit 107. Yep. And they made it sound like you're a bit of a guru. No, dude, so is so that that's their that? that's their fault. That might be their fault. I do. <laughs> I, I just, as I said before, I I enjoy wine, but I'm I'm a very. I mean, in terms of actually knowing much about it, I'm still very novice. Right. Uh, I've got a lot to learn in that in the field. I just I just enjoy wine for for the actual drink that it is. Yeah, I'm not like well versed in. Like I really enjoy beer and I really yeah. enjoy whiskey. Yeah, I, and I, I don't know here. fuck all about. That's, yeah, that's that's very similar to what. Like I know I know a little bit about wine, but like not, yeah. You know, same for beer, same for um, you know, spirits and all that type of stuff. Like, this, uh, my things, I'm very novice with it, but I enjoy drinking most of it. Yeah. You know? So like, if someone hands me it as something and says explains it, and I'll drink it and like it, I'll say yeah, that's yeah, the, no, I like it. You know? I think that's my thing with wine is like I've gone and done I've done t- a ton of wine tastings where they you know they educate you, but because I don't like it, I don't I don't think I'm like tuned into what yeah, they're saying. Yeah. So yeah, because you, you do have to kind of buy into it, don't you? Yeah, exactly yeah. So like stuff. the you know gin, I've done a couple of tastings and like you know the juniper and all yeah. all of this, I, I kind of understand that. That's probably what I understand the most. And I had a um, I had a guy on the show that um. He is one of the founders of Threefold Gin Distillery. Okay. Yep. Um, and he, he loves tequila. So I was getting some good knowledge on tequila from yep. him. But again, that's not probably not a drink that I'm like. You, what's, like your, what's your favorite drink then, if I can ask? Um, beer? Probably. Probably beer. Probably. What's, which, what's your favorite beer? Like a, the type? Um, ale, ale, yeah, ale, ale like yeah. This, this, one? this, yeah, my favorite would be Cooper's Pale Ale. Mm-hmm. Um, just you know the old like that oh, was the one blue of the, one. Is that right? I uh, know that's Pacific Ale. Pacific so ale, Pale Ale, the green one. Green like, one. All the old dudes always drink that one. Yeah, okay. That was my dad always drank it growing up. So that was just like what I was always stealing and like yeah, when yeah. I first got my taste <laughs> yeah. of beer. So, so it's just got used to. You just got that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's what you get used because that's funny because like like you no, know, I used to steal. 
Try and steal like Jim Beams off my dad because that was his favourite drink. And yeah, so, like, yeah. You know, I got accustomed when I was growing up, you know, 17, 18 to like Jim Beams. And that. Yeah. So, yeah I've been trying to um, trying to move more into like whiskey, yeah. like straight, um, just to like reduce the on, calories. On the rocks and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because like beer's a bit like, heavier yeah, in the gut. Heavier, yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, you always old, feel like Yeah, I'm getting you? older, I'm getting fatter. Yeah. My knees are fucked, so I can't <laughs> really work out. Like, yeah, yeah there's so, always. They're always not I could give up way. drinking, but nah. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been trying to get into whiskey, but I've never actually had, like, a whiskey tasting or learn anything about whiskey. So, like, you know, I can taste difference between high and low shelf, yep. but everything in the middle kind of at the moment tastes the same It's the same, yeah. yeah. So that's probably a bit similar to what, um, what my kind of – my knowledge is about wine. You know, I can taste the really good ones. I know exactly – Wow, like I had, it, I went to actually, I went to Gaucho's di- uh, last oh, night. Oh yeah, I just seen your restaurant. In I haven't the city. gone there yet. Oh mate, if you can, yeah, fuck, it's unreal. Okay. Oh, but my favorite restaurant in Adelaide. Okay. By far, by Shit. Far. Mine like, is um Golden Boy. Have you been there? Golden Boy, and um, oh, that's on Guja Street as well. Or is no, that no, North th- Terrace? Uh, North Terrace, North yeah. Terrace, yeah, yeah. So I haven't been there either, but that's, okay. I've heard that, I've heard good things about that as yeah, well. Yeah. So, so the owner there. is um one of my partner's like really good friends. Oh really? So yep. we get get a little bit of a tree when we yeah. go. Like, we usually get like a bottle Lovely. of champagne or something Lovely. on the table. Yeah. Lovely. But um, it's always a good night when you oh, go. Oh, I yeah. fucking love that place. Before yeah. I before I even knew that um you know we had an in there, I was just yeah. like that is my favorite place fucking place. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I have to give it. A, I have to give it a go then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I, yeah, I've got to get to Gauchos. I've gone in there and like had a look because I was um I was thinking of trying to like start a comedy show there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in that back room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it looks beautiful, smells beautiful. Yeah, but, oh, yeah mate, I've got to... Can't recommend it enough. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. All right, Amazing. yeah, I'll try and get in there. Maybe next week. It's pay week next week. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, that's right. So maybe get in there. But, yeah, so it's probably like... I'd, we had a really good wine there last night, and you can just tell the difference. Yeah. So so easily, just so smooth. Yeah. Um, Are you a bit of a foodie? Um, not really. No. I like good food. Yeah. And I still like shit of food, you know, like... I still every like I still have KFC every now and then as yeah. well. So like I'm not much a like a foodie. But yeah, I do enjoy. Well, I mean, when you're running when would. you're running around all day, you can handle a bit of KFC. A bit, I've yeah. got to I've got to pretty much stay away from stay it. away from yeah. it. <laughs> once once a yeah have a bit of a treat. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, but in off season I can kind of have a little bit, but I don't want to have too much either because you know I, otherwise I will blow out as well. And yeah, like and it's in always like it's a lot know, harder to get fitter again when you yeah. <laughs> And it's always, um, you know, it's it, it's good going down, and then you you always feel like shit mm. like afterwards, whether it's whether it's physical or like regret or <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, 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 it all like combines. Um, yeah, what's so Gauchos is heavy on the meat, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's a, it's a majority is it the actual place is a steak restaurant yep. and a meat restaurant, but there is. You know, there is the fish, there is fish and stuff there. Yeah. Because uh, my girlfriend doesn't eat red meat, so she, she had a fish there when we went there. Yeah. It's just got everything, mate. Like the El Diablo uh, oysters they've got there are just. Was that, is that like hot sauce or something? Yeah. It's, it, they, yeah, they, they bring them out hot instead of like cold. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's some type of spicy um, sauce that it's, it's in it as well. And, Fuck oh, yeah. mate. I love oysters already, but yeah. they, they are incredible. Have you done Coffin Bay? I haven't done coffee. Oh, no. Is that the place to do it in SA? Is fuck it? yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The place to go. We went because we were supposed to go to um, Europe. Was that this year? I don't even remember. But obviously, because of um, COVID and all yeah. that, we couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So we ended up. No, it was last year. It was supposed to be last year, but yeah. um, so we ended up making a trip to Coffin Bay instead. Wait, how far away is it from Adelaide? Um, is it near Sejuna? No, f- like Sejuna's probably like halfway, maybe. Oh, really? So it's around like like yeah, even further. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's all the way up and all the way down. Oh, so on the um Flinders, sorry, not the uh the oh, I don't peninsula. Know I peninsula, yeah, yeah, peninsula. So we drove. Did we drove. Yeah, we stayed overnight somewhere on the way there, but we yeah. drove the whole way on the way back. It was about a sixteen hour drive or something. I okay, think. Yeah, yeah. Right. maybe or maybe a bit less than that, but. Yeah. Um, it's just incredible over there. Oh, it's so nice. And the then they've got all these oyster farms and shit, and you can go um, – there's, like, an experience you can have where there's, like, a bar in the middle of the water. Yeah, wow. And you wade out there in waders and – You go and sit, and sit there. And yeah, you sit there and they, they educate you on, like, 
how oyster farming goes, different types of oysters, teach you how to shuck. So you shuck your own oysters. And um, we were, you know, we'd saved up all this money for a fucking Euro trip. trip. So we you had plenty of you had plenty of cash. Yeah, so, for so yeah. we had ordered like a plate of I think it was eighteen oysters yeah. and a bottle of champagne and um oh what's the Bloody Mary like oh, a Bloody, Bloody Mary, Mary shot yeah. with an oyster yeah. in it yeah. and everyone else like pretty much just had their six oysters that you get yeah. and everyone's looking at us like oh fucking oh, really? these guys <laughs> balling like yeah. and I was like I was like oh we love fucking pigs man yeah. but um like it's you know play. it's worth it yeah it's, how good was like they were, they were delicious yeah. and you know oysters aren't like the most filling thing so no. like you have to eat a lot of them to yeah and we so we didn't you know we didn't have to have like a huge lunch or anything that day either but. It was like, it was weird because it was like 10.30 in the morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very early to yeah. do it for a massive piece of voices yeah, and, sh- and champagne. Oh man, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, you got to do it if you can at some point. Yeah, for sure. Take, take the misses. For sure. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good place to be because yeah. both of us love, love, love oysters. So yeah. I'd go and do that. But yeah. Is your, uh, is your mum a good cook? Um, so mum is mum's a, mum's a, a decent cook, but um, my dad's one who's really probably the the best hook out of the two of them. Hopefully, okay. mum, hopefully mum doesn't mind me saying that. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think she'll be watching this anyway, so that's all right, so I can say it. But um, she's not very not very good at uh, using technology, mum, so it's okay. Um, but, yeah. yeah, so but dad's you – know, mum's still a decent cook, but dad's um, probably the best one in the family. He's really good at yeah. um, just kind of doing – he can kind of pick – Kind of make whatever he can, but just does a really good job of, job of whatever it is yeah. that he's making. Has he got a signature dish? Um. <coughs> I mean, every dad does. He does a really good Barbie. Yeah. But, um. He, he's in terms of actually cooking something. Um. His his chicken curry. His chicken curry. Thai curry. Green. Thai, um. Thai green. Mum will do a Thai green one, and Dad will do like a more of a yellow. Yeah. Like a yellow. I don't know what that one's actually called, but it is yellow, and it's that one's pretty good. Yeah. And that's the one that Dad's good at. Uh, but he also does a good stir fry. If you um, if you could have one person mm-hmm. in the world living. Mm-hmm. Come over for dinner at your parents' place. Dad's cooking. What are you asking him to cook? Oof, it's tough. Uh, and what? Well, who are, who are you getting who to come would, over? Would and then what are you what are you asking your dad to cook? Oh, I'd say probably like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah, I'd take yeah. Michael Jordan. <laughs> that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that'd I mean, be that'd be good. mine. Like that's that's too easy that'd for be, me. It's, yeah, it's yeah. almost too easy. I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't want to be too cliche or too basic. No, I mean, I, do, but, I, th- yeah. I think a lot of sports people would probably say Michael Jordan. Tom Brady's probably up there. Um, LeBron's and LeBron. Yeah, there'd be a lot of that. Messi's and Ronaldo's. You got to get into different areas like the arts to start hearing some different arts. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it'd be pretty cool having having like some of the best actors in the world. Like yeah, like a Leo. Leo or Brad Pitt or yeah. one of my favourite, Ewan McGregor. Oh, okay. So him. Yeah. I love Ewan McGregor. Um, that, that'd be pretty cool. But like if I had to be, if I had to be as brutally honest as, you know, as I could, I'd just say, oh, Michael and Jack, Jordan. Yeah. Sure. And what's, <laughs> sure. what's dad cooking for him? Oh, I'd have to say, even Australian Barbie. Australian Barbie. Yeah. yeah I wonder. He probably, he w- that's something Surely probably, he's, he, he would have been here it. before. He would I don't know. Has he? Maybe. Surely. That, surely you'd think he would have been to Australia before, but I don't. Rec- I've never seen any any publicity about him actually being in Australia. That's a good point. We should. I should have got you to come in on, on a day where we had Boardman in here to do all the googling to, and shit. To actually get us into yeah, because that's um, an interesting point. Because I don't reckon I've never seen any publicity or anything about him being in Australia before. Yeah. I'm, but so I, so that would have mean that he wouldn't have had an Australian Barbie. So that would be something yeah, different for him. Yeah. Maybe. Wow, yeah, I'm gonna have to Google that too. Yes, check if he's uh, ever I been. Find that out as well. Yeah, I don't know if he's actually been to Australia before either. Yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Trying to think of what Olympics he did. There was no Australian 90, ones. Ninety two. Ninety six. He wasn't playing. No, ninety. No, was he, was he playing ninety six? Ninety four, ninety five. He was out. Ninety six. He was playing. Yeah, was playing the ninety six Olympics though. I don't know. I think. I think so. I'm trying to think. It wasn't the dream team of 1992, though. Did he only do that one year? No, I'm pretty sure he's got two Olympic gold medals. So he would have done 92 and... 96. 96, I reckon. And that was... Um, Athens? Athens, was it? One of them Was one of them Barcelona? Yeah, I can't remember. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I can't remember. None of them were Melbourne, though. And he didn't... He wasn't, you know... 2000, Sydney, he's Sydney probably... 2000. 
he was probably at the Washington Wizards <laughs> then. Yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, he, no, it would have been no, in between. He yeah, wouldn't have, wouldn't right. have been so playing then. He, so he wouldn't have been here. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. That was when Vince Carter dunked on that Frenchie. Yeah, dunked over it. Like over jumped it. over yeah. it. Yeah, and seven foot <laughs> the best, six Frenchie or best, something. The best in-game dunk you've ever, anyone's ever seen. He was one of those guys, um, like the Knicks drafted. He was one of those fucking yeah. bullshit Knicks picks. <laughs> Jeez, haven't they? They've had some bad ones. In the They're looking better though now. What are you mm. thinking of the new, um, the new rule that's fucking up James Harden, Trey Young, and Steph Curry? About the um, the non basketball moves, the, the flop, and into like the back of them, the one that Trey does. Yeah. Look, I, I particular, I love, I love Trey, so I'm a bit. Oh, like you're gonna, a Trey guy. Be, I fucking hate him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Trey. So, and I don't mind James Harden as well. I think he's yeah. alright. Not as much of a Steph Curry fan. Oh, okay, I'm probably Steph. Oh, you opposite? Steph's, you Steph. I'm probably the opposite, opposite yeah. Steph, Steph Harden, um, and then Trey. Trey like, yeah. I'm a Trey hater. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You don't like what? Why? What don't you like about him? Uh, he doesn't play with any honor. That's and that's honor. the. What yeah. do you mean? Like, it, like because he does that because of all that shit. I know Steph does it, and Harden and does it. Harden, well. Harden, Harden draw, draw the like the, the hook around foul. Yeah, and that type of yeah. Stuff. yeah. So, oh, I think Harden out of the three of them, I like. I accept it the most because he kind of like beat the game. He, he found out a way to draw yeah, all those he literally scouts. exploited it, yeah. It's boring to watch. I don't want to watch someone shoot 20 free throws a game. Nah. You're that good at scoring, so just score. Just score, yeah. Um, and then Trey... You play, like, you played at a college level, so it's like... Yeah. You know, like, if you... How frustrating would it be for you to go up against someone who who did that to you? Like, If I played against James Harden, I would have fouled out in the first Yeah, half. you would just, like, go and <laughs> try and beat him up. Yeah. Just, just say, nah, I, like... It, I can't even imagine guarding someone that that good that like, does that does stuff that they that he yeah, did. yeah like my toughest matchup would have been Cody Zeller oh yeah Cody Zeller yeah, yeah yeah and that was I mean that wasn't that hard like I'm mean, I'm not trying to like yeah. take anything away from him but he's a big man he's not he's not going to beat me off a step yeah yeah he was he's, he's not going to. He's not going to dribble around you yeah. and beat you off the dribble. I was, and I was stuff. like, for yeah. my size, I was always quick and yeah. agile. Like I could guard like a like the smalls yeah. as well. Yeah. He so he was way stronger than me, mm-hmm. which was hard. Um, but wouldn't be able to beat you off the dribble. No, yeah. Oladipo was, yeah, was gonna, yeah, the biggest against. talent and that I played on. against, yeah. but I didn't have to guard him. And he was it was he was like crazy on defense. He had like. 15 deflections in yeah, the game. Like, yeah. he was just, just, just read everything everywhere. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. He was unbelievable. Yeah. Well, it's like, the, just out just of their curiosity, because you play at that level, what's the, just like, what's the, how far is the gap between getting drafted in the NBA and, and like, the best college players that don't get drafted in, in, into the NBA yeah. and, and ones that actually get drafted into the NBA but never might, like, even play like not like yeah. forget the stars because that's a different kettle of fish but yeah. like the ones that'll get drafted in like the second round and then the ones that'll like well you gotta because like, I think like, like Melo Trimble is, is a good example I yeah. thought he was always a really good really good college player and I remember watching him yeah Melo Trimble and there's another guy who does crazy good scorers in, in college but it's, then like it's tough to you can be on that fringe and not make it and then once you go into a system like China or like EuroLeague or something. Like if, yeah, if you don't make EuroLeague and you're just in some yeah. Europe team yeah. where you're really good, you can get caught you can easily get caught up in like a lifestyle instead of focusing on your game. Okay. So like Brandon Jennings sort of like he was so talented <clears throat> and I think he should have played in the league for much longer than he did. Yeah. But I think going to China and things like that where like the, the game's so much slower, it's too it's like almost too easy. Yeah, and it was all about him as well. Yeah. Like he was the focal point. Yeah, it kinda it kinda takes away. So you gotta think about the numbers. The the NBA draft is sixty picks. Yep. Thirty in the first round which are guaranteed, thirty in the second round which are non guaranteed. Yep. So sixty picks a year is <laughs> Not is not much. <laughs> it's not much. Out of I think there's like 300 Division One yeah. teams, um, so that's about 3,000 players. I don't know how many people declare for the draft every year. Like most, you, you know, if you're not if gonna, you, like, yeah. I didn't declare. I yeah. wasn't ever going to go to the league. Yep. Um, so 
the, the numbers are stacked against you. Then yeah. if you do get drafted in that second round, you're not even guaranteed to play yeah. in the league. Yeah. Um, so the gap, the gap's massive. The gap's massive for the guys that are actually like going to play and actually have an impact versus fringe guys. Like that's why like people. You, I don't know if you're a bit young for this, but Brian Scalabrini. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen some of his stuff saying like he would destroy the like like just average people. Like it's yeah. ob- like obviously. But yeah. Like, so like he'd destroy college people as but well. But because of how he looks, people would talk so much shit. They're to deceiving, him. like yeah. So he would be like playing playing at like a YMCA or just like shooting and, yeah. and people would come and challenge him. Yeah, yeah. I've seen I've seen And some he would of just bury them. Oh. Like they wouldn't get a chance to touch the ball. Nah, that's right. Play king of the court and yeah. just go through Yeah, yeah. yeah. like it's Hundred percent. Like, you know, like the people, just regular people. Just it's pretty similar with like in AFL. How like people are always calling us out and saying, you know, "Yeah, listen to you saying how shit you are and all yeah. that type of stuff." Like you have no idea what it's like out there. You got you might play local footy at the most. Yeah, and people are out there are either fat and got like no idea how to play, or they're just the game's so slow and so easy. Yeah, and it's like don't ever tell us like, "Oh, you missed a kick like that." You'd hit like I could hit that kick. Like, yeah, yeah. Mate, if you have thirteen, like if you have eighteen other blokes against you out there on the ground who are as fit and fast as they are, and yeah. they try and cut time in to tackle you, and you're under the pump all the time, there is no way you are hitting any of these kicks. And you're playing in front of the crowd there as well. Fucking eighty people on a Saturday, and you're playing in front of twenty thousand. Yeah, a, especially, a, especially when not in COVID times. Exactly. Yeah, like there's a difference. There's a got, huge. I have difference. no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. And, and like, <clears throat> you can see it with guys that. Kind of towards the end of their career, and I don't mean any disrespect by this, but Bryce Gibbs, yeah, towards the end with the Crows, he wasn't super efficient, yeah, and he ended up playing in the local league. He's getting 40 touches a game without tr- like that's it didn't what, look like he was trying. I mean, like, if, if, so <coughs> yeah, th- there's this is a good example there, it's yeah. Like any and you see most ex AFL players if they go back and play country league footy, yeah, Brennan like, Favola, yeah, I know, like, that's <laughs> what I mean, like, you see. You see ex-AFL players come back and play local footy and all this type of stuff. And you see them absolutely, like, demolish and, like, just absolutely demolish, like, every other team and every other player. Because, like, there's a, it's the same as what you just said then with the basketball. Like, there's such a big dis- disparity of... Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. Like, there's, there's just such a big gap between that. And they don't... Something, some people don't get it. And it's just yeah. frustrating because, like, you, you can't tell them that. You can't, you no, can't be... No. There's no, like, I mean, there's part of part of the internet is like the the anonymity of it all. So you can you control people, yeah. and there's yeah. no there's no like <laughs> yeah. you half the time I think they know that they're wrong. Yeah, but they're just like I'm gonna try and get a response from Xavier Dersma. You know? Yeah, that's right. And yeah. then um, you you might say something back, and and because you've said it back, they'll be like, oh, I was just kidding, Got but yeah yeah, 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 good to good like, to would, chat. Would they ever like, say that to you in? Uh, like in public, would they, ever, if they, would they ever say that to you? Like, no, no, yeah, no, exactly. no way. Like, like ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time, they wouldn't say that no. to you in public. So it's no just way. because they can hide behind the yeah. thing. Exactly, and it's you know half the time. Like, it's like, like, I've never replied to a comment that's you know been pretty harsh and like just, there's been some pretty pretty horrible stuff that gets said to me and other players around the league, especially like especially when people are losing stuff that gets losing money on you. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, you know, someone might be losing five bucks on me, yeah. and they spray me. It's like, mate, you lost five bucks. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't, and how I don't about get don't do stuff. a fucking fifteen leg multi, yeah, you dummy? But, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, as I said, I've never responded to anything like that. But sub G's, I've wanted to sometimes. Yeah. You know? But yeah, and I've never even, you know, as I said before, I've never even had the bad stuff in terms of like the racism stuff. I wouldn't imagine how how shit that would make some people feel. But oh, you know, f- f- fucking shit. Yeah. So people just <laughs> speak like. Why would you do it? Why? It's crazy. It's Why? so crazy. And then, oh, no, I won't, I won't get into that. Um, no, nah, yeah, we won't get into it. Otherwise, you go down, <laughs> go down a big hole. Yeah, man. yeah. Or, or I won't be able to air the episode because I'll start talking about the Adelaide yeah. Crows. Yeah, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, did you did you watch the rest of the, the finals after getting knocked out? I, I was pretty... I was pretty. Uh, I watched the grand final from my girlfriend's house in Perth. Yeah. I I had the opportunity to go, but I gave my, I gave my tickets to her parents to oh, okay nice go one. And watch the game. Um, and yeah, like I I watched the end of the first quarter, a bit of the second quarter. Saw the Bulldogs were getting up, and I was like, no, oh, 
can't watch this, turned it off, and then all of a sudden Melbourne went bang, 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 was, bang, bang. It was crazy. Like I watched like the last 15 minutes. The score, last the score makes it look like it was a shit game, yeah. but it was actually, yeah, yeah it was really good to watch. Yeah. I, watch yeah. I watch parts, like I'm yeah. Yeah, that's all tough. up, of, I watched maybe 35 or 40% of the game, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I didn't really, I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah, no, like of course. Being there. Yeah. Uh, what are your what are your picks for the NBA next season? So you're yep. you're a big you're a I'm Houston a, guy, right? I'm a, I'm a, I change every year. Oh, so you're a hard guy. Yeah, so I, I was a Russ guy, and all, like he just cause get it gets getting traded every time, and yeah. Now I just kind of like I don't even know if I go for a team. I just want Russ to go and get a ring somehow, and yeah. then you know, I want Trey to go well, all this type of stuff, but. Originally, I was an OKC Thunder fan, and I was really hard on them until Russ got traded yep. and Paul George and everything. But now I'm just kind of following players. Yeah, just want I just want a good I just want a cool finals and a good 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 playoff series. Really, who so do I'm about you, to pick it? Yeah, for the for the win. Um, who did I say last year? Oh, that's a, that's good, a good question. question. We had the same question last year. And I'm wondering who. I uh, wondering who I actually picked. I'll have to go back and check, but I feel like. It, I feel like it had to have been either Brooklyn or LA. I think that's what I said. Yeah, yeah I think it's. I said. I said. I said. I reckon I, I wanted Brooklyn to win it. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and then I said, but I, I could see LA taking it off them. But then in the end, none of them won it, did they? None of them. None of them got there. None of them got there. <laughs> but he, the uh, mi- millimeters because of uh, Kevin, Kevin Durant's, Durant's toe. Yeah. yeah his toe. Um, but I was happy. I'm. I'm. Because I thought. Like, I was happy that Giannis didn't, like, try and chase a ring and go to a super team. Yeah, that's, that's good to see. But I was, I was nervous that he pretty much gave up a ring by doing that, like, signing five years. He's going to play out his prime in Milwaukee. Yeah. It didn't – on paper, it didn't look like he was going to win one. Yeah, and he did, though. But, like, and that's, the, that's the good old-fashioned, like – Karma. It's a good – yeah, well, that's what, it's, it's good karma for him, but it's the good old-fashioned, like, you know, sticking to it and – yeah. Working and working and working and keep improving until it actually happens. And, yeah, you know, like you see, like I don't know the Jordan, like having to beat Detroit, in yeah, the end and overcoming that, and the Celtics in the end, and eventually becoming into that all yeah. this type of stuff. And I, I almost kind of like, I hope that's what happens with us here at Port. You know, like we've had two times we've fallen short yeah. against different opponents in the prelim, and now it's just like, well, hopefully we can just get something to go our way, and the third time, lucky. I suppose you know, Giannis was what's it, the third or fourth time. You know? Yeah, he's still stuck at it, and you know, hopefully, that's you know, enough persistence and resilience. We'll be able to do the same. Yeah, so I've got like part of me has like a bias towards Milwaukee to to run it back, but I feel like I feel like the office made a big mistake letting go of PJ Tucker. You reckon? I think so. Yeah. Like who'd they get? Oh, uh, what's his name from Boston? Was it O O Kinga or something like that? Oh, I I can't even oh, remember who o- they got. Yeah, but it's not a PJ Tucker replacement. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, because he was pretty bloody good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he did some. He does the dirty work. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that need, was a you mistake. Need, you need at least one of them on every team if yeah. you're going to be a championship team. There, obviously, there could be a, um, you know, mid-season t- type of yeah. trades and all that kind of stuff. But I think I don't know what Brooklyn looks like with Kyrie doing what he's doing with the vaccine. Mm. I don't know if that breeds resentment in the team and like, I don't know if that chemistry issue chemistry stuff, yeah. um I think KD and Harden is probably enough to get it over the line but I think I think with the chemistry that that could be a problem yeah yep that's you have two of the best what would you put them probably you could say t- you could ugly say two of the best five players in the NBA is still on the same team so you could yeah, say like easily two of the best top 10 easily two of the best top 10 yeah top They're five arguable. potentially top five yeah. arguable that's always, you know, it's always going to put you in a good position. Yeah, it? yeah, and then <laughs> put you in a good position to win. Yeah, you know, Philly, Philly's probably the the best matchup against Milwaukee, but that's if I mean, what the hell's going on with Paul, you know, ben? ben Simmons? Yeah, so I think that's going to be a problem over there too. LA is looking super old, but I mean, the, you know, still LeBron, LeBron and, and AD, AD, and then now they have Russ, and, like and he Russ. had a, he had a terrible start in his preseason games, but. Yeah. I think Russ always is a little bit of a slow start. He's probably just trying to get adjusted to being third fiddle now. Yeah, but I think um, I'm hoping that LA. I'm hoping for Russ, just for just personally for Russ. Yeah, I think I so. Think Western it. Conference Finals. I'm thinking probably LA, and my heart wants 
Golden State with Clay coming back. Yeah. I can I, and I can honestly see Golden State being very good again. This yeah, year. but I don't want to sleep on Utah. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, no, see that's I I I think Utah if you if you're if you're assembling a pure basketball team, yeah. Utah is a good way to look at doing that. You got a point guard who's a proper point guard in yeah. Conley. You got a good shooting guard who's a shooting guard in um, Donovan. And then you got Jing- Jingles as a small forward. Um, who's their power forward? Is it Favors? They got Derek they Favors. Got, um, and do they have? You got someone else there now? Don't, oh, sorry. Um, is Jay Crowder there? Jay Crowder or does they have? No, is Aaron Gordon there? No, he's at uh, Nuggets. He's at sorry. yeah Denver. Uh, and then obviously then your center there, Rudy. Uh, Rudy, Rudy Gobert, yeah. Which is like if you look at that, if you look at like how basketball was meant to be made, yeah, that's like almost the exact team you want. Like you want a big center who's a good defender, and everyone can shoot, um, except Rudy. Except Rudy, yeah. Fav- Favors not really. If is Crowder there? I can't remember. Crowder was. Oh no, heat. he was at the Heat. He went. He ago. was at uh, Phoenix. He's at Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. Um, who they have, have their power. They have they have a power forward there that is. Noteworthy. Yeah. Is, so yeah, I think I think they they're gonna be good. I'm not I'm not sure about Phoenix. I do I do feel like Phoenix sort of they got in there because yeah. of injuries and yeah. that. But I mean, you can say the same thing about Milwaukee. So yeah. it's hard. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, you know, that's a, it, I I was enjoyed last year's finals because there was two teams we'd never seen there before. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought was really enjoyable. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. And um. I thought, like, before it started, I was like, oh, you know, I don't care who wins. It would be nice to see CP3 get one. Yeah. It would be nice Giannis. to see Giannis. And then as soon as um, Phoenix won, I think Phoenix won game one. Yeah. I was like, no, no, I don't want them to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I figured it out real early. You figured it out that you wanted Giannis yeah. to yeah. Yeah. get up. And they did, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was happy. I was happy with that. Mm. I'm, li- I'm liking my balls, too. Like, oh, they look good too, don't they? They made yeah. some really good trades and yeah. stuff. Yeah, strange, office. strange um, contract for Demar. The well, what was it in the end? Like eighty-five mil. Um, eighty-five mil is not a bad new contract. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how how many years he's there, but it's a. I think I think he's been overpaid. Like he's he's aging. I think he's out of his prime. Yeah, eighty-five. But he's his manager's done all right for him, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So no, nah, I'm excited yeah. to watch him. Because yeah. I never usually buy like KO or um, NBA League Pass or anything. I think I'll do it this do it year. For this year, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, Bulls haven't looked this fun since you know D Rose before the injuries. D Rose and Jimmy Butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. yeah, that's true. Yeah, how long has it been since the Bulls been? The last time Bulls were in the playoffs would have been D Rose and Jimmy Butler, wasn't it? Yeah, so we're looking at um, 15, 16? T- no, no, before that, I think. Before that, I, I think probably. 2012 was when the Bulls made co- uh, conference finals with D Rose. Yeah, and he and then they made the he, semis with he tore his Butler. meniscus yeah, in the, in the, in the um, conference finals, and they didn't win a game after that. Yeah. Uh, and that was pretty much it. I think. Yeah, right. And then they they did make it again with Jimmy Butler. Oh, and they did. D Rose in like 2015. Oh, or okay. 15 or 16, something like that. Oh, right. okay, right. But they didn't make it to the conference. They made the semis, I think. Yeah. They, they had they gave it to six games, I think, to LeBron's Cavs. I think. That's right. That's Pretty right. Pretty sure. LeBron and Kyrie's Cavs. Yeah. They, gave, they went to six games, I think, in the end. But, yeah, I mean, it's still, it was an entertaining s- series. I was really – I was hoping the Bulls actually got up. But yeah. 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 But, no, it'll be good. It'll be good to see them, um, you know, the probably the closest thing to Lob City at the moment. They are a bit – yeah. They are. Hopefully this one works for them. Run and gun. They'll, they'll look like the seven-second Suns when yeah. Steve Nash and um, Murray Stout Stoudemire. Stoudemire. Yeah. yeah. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll be happy to see them. So yeah, so you reckon you reckon Brooklyn, LA again? Mm. That's what you hope for, or maybe nah, Atlanta. I don't even know. I, I wouldn't mind seeing, wouldn't mind seeing some under under underdogs come into it. Atlanta, Atlanta, like I, I hate Atlanta to say, it, did it. they, they look good, don't I they? like their roster. Yeah, I like their roster too. They've got continuity as well from last season. They're not they're not that different. Um, oh, right. I think yeah, I think they're gonna I think they're gonna go well again. Um, if they stay healthy. Yeah. Um, and then who else? Who else is like a little underdog that could come good? You can still say Phoenix could be, they'd be thereabouts. Yeah. Phoenix yeah. would be thereabout. I think, I, th- I think Golden State would be considered an underdog. Um, just really? You reckon? Well, What's, when they, they got, when they they got they to the, back. 
he'll be back from the start, won't he? He did. He sat out yeah. the whole season. Yeah, I think he must. So he should be back from the start. Yeah. Has he played in their preseason game yet? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. So it might be from early, early on in the season. Yeah. So. Uh, I still think they, well, State they played in the playoff, the play in. Play in, they? they lost yeah. to someone. Lost to the uh, Lakers, LA. Yeah. yeah. Lakers, so. I mean, yeah, I, I can see. I think I think Golden State should be. They should they should be better. I mean, they got some massive underperformance from Kelly Oubre and stuff like that. Yeah, he was he was pretty shit all year. Yeah, and there's a few other people that underperformed. All year. Have they I traded him or is he still there? I, know, I actually don't know. I feel like he's gone. Oh, he's. He is gone. Yeah, because they need to get rid of him because he was pretty terrible. And he was, um, like, he wanted to start and shit. Yeah, like yeah he was going Over terribly. Clay. He wanted to start over Clay. Yeah, not going <laughs> to Nuts. Happen. Yeah. Um, fuck. Yeah, I forgot where he's gone. Yeah, he's, I'm not he's sure gone, he's gone though. either, but he's gone. But they've yeah. kept Wiggins. They kept Wiggins and they got the new guy, Jordan Poole, who's been playing well. Poole and Scano. they've kept, kept Wiseman. Wiseman yeah. And they gave... Um, Eric Pascal is now at uh, Starter, Utah. Utah. He's down there because right. him and um, Donovan Mitchell are like best friends. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. That helps Utah out. Maybe they'll be all right because Eric Pascal is not bad. Yeah, I like him. Do you have Do you have any like friends from high school or anything in the AFL? Um, so for me, in terms of my actual age group, um, I have all my mates. Um, were just they didn't play any. Um, any like they're not in the AFL or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but I do have. Guy who was who was a couple of years, one that I went to school with earlier on. It's called Sam, uh, named Sam Flanders, who plays at Gold Coast, mm-hmm. um, and he left our school I think at year eight or year nine um, to go be at a um, another another school like a sports school. Oh, okay. And then uh, I got a guy in two years younger than me who's Ryan Angwin, who's at GWS. Yep. And like we do running and stuff in the off season and everything okay. like that. So yeah, he's a good guy and. Anyone um, from state teams that you played with? That um, there were a couple of a couple of mates from state teams, but unfortunately, already been delisted. Like Irving Mosquito, Zach Foot, um, they were down a few, but most people. Um, and then there are still um, Caleb Sarong's playing at Frio. Yep. Um, and he's had he's been having really two two really good seasons. Um, and obviously Sam Flanders and stuff like that. So there's still a couple of guys around the league that have, I was mates with um, growing up, and yeah, kind of played a lot of footy with. So. Yeah. In terms of like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of my mates have already unfortunately been delisted, so it's pretty shit. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, like I said, it's hard. There's a, hard, the hard the industry. gap. The gap is 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 very big. Yeah. So you can you can be the best by far at that lower level, yeah. and not just not be ready. Not translate. Yeah. yeah. Not get into that next yeah. that next bit. It's unfortunate sometimes, but yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it is what it is. You know. It's yeah. Um, and yeah, before we go, you, you enjoy your movies. Have Love you got, them. you got any recommendations for us at the Love moment? Them. Oh goodness. This is, this is, this is the most enjoyable thing. I just love movies. Um, what have I watched? Unfortunately, as the pandemic's kind of played out, yeah. there hasn't really been a whole lot of new movies come out, have there? No, no. I mean, I've watched, I think I reviewed Free Guy last week. Yep. Is, what'd you think? I've heard, I've heard some people really thought it was funny, and some people thought it was great, and other people didn't like it. I I enjoyed it yeah. enough. It's a, it's a, just a pure like enjoyment factor movie. Yeah, yeah. It, I didn't think it was great. I didn't like the side story. Did you watch it? I haven't seen it yet. No. So there's a side story, sort of like where the developers of the game. So he he's a video game character. Um, the developers of the game developed this software that got stolen by, like, some video game giant. Yep. Um, and so there was, like, this side quest to get their software back. Right. Um, which I didn't care about. Like, yeah. like it just the, wasn't part of what the Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really matter. There was no, like, true investment to it. Like, and he became, yeah, a bit distracting almost. Yep. Ryan Reynolds is great, as always. Yeah, I was going to say, Ryan Reynolds is funny. So yeah. You're, you're always, um, always going to be captivated by him. Yeah, I thought they could have focused more on, like, you know, like simulation theory. Yeah. Yeah, so it kind of felt like that's what they were going for, was, like, he became aware of the fact that he was... It was a simulation. He, yeah, he yeah. didn't he like mean anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if they went in that direction and made it All like a that. funny version of the Matrix yeah. almost, that would have been 
really cool, but like this side quest shit that I didn't care about. Like yeah. maybe that's just me, but it got super hyped up too. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, right. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I will. I reckon I'll have to give it a watch just to actually yeah um, see what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I mean, movies that I've been watching lately. Uh, one that's kind of been out for a bit, but one that I really loved from last year was Extraction. Okay. Chris Hemsworth. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really good. The action and um, everything that went on with that, I thought was was really good. Yeah, um, really liked it. Uh, I love Chris Hemsworth as well, just as an actor and like Aussie, Aussie yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's nah, cool. he was um, he was good in that. Yeah, yeah. And there was really good stunt stunts and everything. Um, other movies that I've been watching lately, I actually for the first time watched Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. Oh, um, with the car. With the car, yeah. yeah. Um, what was that last night or the night before? The night before. Yeah. No, um, like that's it's probably one of his worst movies. Yeah, but, I was going to say, cause I, I, I had it. no idea what the hell was going on. And then all of a sudden, it just ended. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I, I don't, oh, that was a bit of a blur of what actually just, was just happening in there. Um, but yeah, Sam uh, and myself, so my, my housemate and teammate, uh, Sam Hayes, we, we love Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. We, think it, we love that. Yeah. Um, my favourite that I've watched recently. Oh, I saw Django probably a couple of weeks ago. Django yep. Unchained. Yep. One of my faves. Um, I think. Watched, I watched Harry Potter through for the first time. Okay. Over the, you think? Over a few weeks. Um, yeah, I liked it. it Pretty high standard through the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. no, I, like, I liked Harry Potter. I, I didn't, uh, I don't like it as much as I love Star Wars. Nowhere near it. Yeah. Like, or Marvel or anything like that. But I still liked it. I thought they were decent movies. Yep. Yeah. Um. Anything that's been recent, like I haven't even been able to watch like the the Black Widow or like a yeah Shang-Chi. I haven't, got there I haven't, yet haven't seen them. Even though I like Marvel, I just haven't seen them yet. Um, I haven't been like yeah, I haven't really been seeing a whole lot of in terms of like new movies lately. I've just been watching a lot of older ones. Yeah, just because I like just because I love movies like in terms of the, the ones I've already seen. Yeah, I haven't and and ones that are on Netflix that I haven't seen yet, but I haven't actually seen like they're not releasing ones. like. They're not releasing a lot of good new stuff. Yeah, I know. That's also been part of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Like... Have you seen... Is it, when, sorry, when's the... Sorry to cut in. What, when's the uh, new 007 come out for us in Australia? Are it's got to be soon because I've heard, I've heard like on a couple of podcasts yeah. people talking about it in America. Yeah, so it's got to be, well it's gotta be soon. Time. Yeah, it has to be. It's the same with Venom. Like, I, I was very excited to go see Venom, but then I found out it's not... We don't. It doesn't get released until like end of November. Or yeah, like hopefully, that. hopefully they've figured it out and it's a bit better than the first one. Yeah. Did you not like the first one? It was fine, like, but yeah, again, it was just sort of, I don't know, like rushed or forced, like, yeah. like all these super movies, super superhero movies are coming out. Like we've got to, we've got to do Venom. Get it now. out. Get it out. Let's yeah. get it. Let's, and it just didn't seem like the story was well thought out. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the way they ended it set it up for a sequel yep. so yeah hopefully they um had something in mind already and they've had some time to sort mm-hmm. of get it together because yep. I, I love tom hardy i love tom hardy too yeah, yeah. I think he's really cool yeah i think he's a really cool actor really good actor too yeah uh, oh sorry i watched uh, revenant as well i reckon a couple of weeks ago oh yeah revenant. yeah that was really good that's um one of the few movies i've given a 10 to oh really yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. wow that's that's a big that big praise for it then yeah what, yeah. what other movies are given a 10 Interstellar. Yep, love that movie as well. Yep. I saw that last year for the first time. That was a really good movie. Yeah. Um, I reckon there is another one, but I can't think Off of the top it of your head. right now. Yeah, I reckon that's. I think there's three or maybe four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I. In terms of me giving ten to movies, I'm a like I'm like biased to myself. Yeah. The ones that I just love, like Revenge of the Sith, like it's not. Yeah. It's not a. It's not a ten out of ten, but for me, it's a ten out of ten. Yeah. Because it's my favorite one from a kid, and my I just still love it. My favorite movie is, uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. and that's probably like for me like an eight point five or a nine. Yeah, and that's yeah, your favorite. That's movie. my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Do you like the characters? What's what? I makes love the characters. Favorite? I love the the dialogue. Yeah. Um, the costume. Like, I just think it's yeah, it's just so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, so and I've it's got high rewatchability. It's yeah. it's long, but I can watch that like once a year. Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's all right. Um, um, but like with Interstellar and The Revenant, I think they're like perfectly made. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to like sit down and watch that like, all through again. Yeah, yeah. like I'll, I'll yeah I'll watch them again in my life. But yeah. like I'm not gonna be like. 
trying to make time to watch them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I like... I really love Lord of the Rings as well. Mm-hmm. And, the, like, I, I, I know there's a lot of criticism about the Hobbit movies, but I actually like them. I, I like them as well. I think, they're, I think they're cool. Yeah. I um, think, like, the criticism... There was, like, a bunch of GoPro footage and stuff like that, which they said was, like, tacky, but I actually, I actually thought that was really cool. Yeah, I think they had... There was a lot, I've seen a lot of stuff about, like, the problems with the story yeah. of the Hobbit. It was too dragged out, and there's a lot of stuff they changed and stuff. But I... As just a pure movie, I just enjoy it. I have yeah. to watch the last one. So I'm watching the through. I do the Hobbits and Lord of the Rings and Star Wars all once a year. Yeah. And like I'm just about to do the Hobbit for the third, the, the last part of the Hobbit. Yeah. I'm gonna probably watch it the next day or two. Yeah. Over the weekend, just to finish that off. But that's that's sorry. There's another cup. There's two more, three more movies I'm trying to watch recently yeah. that I've watched before, but I really like them. Yeah, I don't know what's on my list at the moment. Transformers and Marvel as well. Oh yeah. Love yeah. Transformers, love I all the Marvel ones. There was one Transformers I didn't really like, but I don't, I can't get, there's so many of them. The I first can't. three were the good ones. Yeah. The last two have been, yeah. Yeah. Not as big for me, but yeah. the first three were pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. With um, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, like, Shia LaBeouf. I love him. Oh, he was pretty cool. Oh, like dude, him. you got to see um, Peanut Butter Falcon. That's with Shia LaBeouf, isn't it? Shia yeah. LaBeouf. Um, yeah. And with the uh, Down, Down Syndrome, Syndrome Boy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah. he wants to be a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good movie, is it? Unbelievable. Indie movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like Tear Jerker. Yeah, right. Really, really good. And then there's another one, I think it's called Honey Boy. Yeah. I haven't seen that one, but that's supposed to be really Actually, good too. Yeah. That's Shia LaBeouf. And yep. it's like, I think it's a story about the, his relationship with his dad or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's about him, isn't it, growing yeah. up? I've, yeah. I've seen something about that as well. I haven't seen it as well, but I'll give it two, two Shia LaBeouf movies. Yeah, yeah. I've got, to, I've got to, I've still got to see Honey Boy, so I've, that'll be on the list. Yeah, right. But. I'll give them a watch then. Yeah. Because yeah. I, lo- I do like Shia LaBeouf and I loved him as a kid. Always thought he was funny as. Yeah. Uh, all the Transformers. And all. Squid Game's the one that like. Yeah, I watched a bit of Squid Game. Everyone's telling me, come on, we're, we need the review for yeah. Squid Game. So I've got to probably you bang gotta that, watch that out. Yeah. Go through it. I watched that from episodes. F- oh, I have to remember what Sam. Sam watched the whole thing. And I think I watched and he was, you know, kept telling me, oh my God, it's so good. Come yeah. watch it. So I went up and watched it with him. I think from like episode four or five onwards. Yeah. Four, maybe four onwards. So I watched the last five episodes of the season and I thought it was good. Yeah. I thought it was good. So, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know what I would call it in terms of like a, a rating out of 10, but I, d- I thought it was, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. And it's got, it's obviously got a lot of traction online and everyone's talking about yeah, it. Yeah, so. like going off. Massive, isn't it? They're saying it's the biggest streamed thing on Netflix so far. They never give numbers though. So. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's yeah. It's weird how they never like, Whenever you search a movie up that's been on Netflix or a streaming service only, like they never give you like a box office stats and yeah, well, it's I think not a box office obviously, but Netflix it's hard to like Netflix doesn't release any numbers, yeah, yeah. so not even to the creators, yeah. So yeah. I think for it's smart in terms of like you know we're going to pay you X amount of money to create this, mm-hmm. go do it, but that's that's all that's you it. get yeah, regardless. Yeah. So. That's smart, but like, yeah, there's so no. They can't. They can't claim any of the box office earnings. Yeah. All, the, all the you know, re- like saying well, we earn. We, we're the yeah, most. Yeah, because otherwise show. they would turn into like Spotify and have to pay them royalties and all this type of stuff. Yeah, but like profit, Spotify, like Spotify, you don't. You get like point zero zero one of a percent of a cent or something yeah, of, yeah. like per play. Per, yeah, per per view or per. So play, yeah. if they did that for movies, like. There wouldn't be any point, so I think yeah. it's it's good to just pay them a lump sum and that's say that's it. Yeah. But yeah, if they release the numbers, then they'll start getting people trying to get into use their yeah. service and say, well, hang on, we're the most viewed, we're yeah. the most viewed thing. Where's our extra money for for being the best, you know, best and most watched thing? Exactly. Like yeah, actually, I'd never thought about it like that because I only thought like just that they just release it, but they never did. So it's yeah, yeah. I go. think I, I think other like other streamers release it, but yeah, Netflix is. Um, famous for not not doing it. Um, uh, is there anything you want to plug before you go? Buy your season tickets for the power. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not really not really anything too pressing. I think that I've got yep. here for you. But yeah, just to say thank you to the fans that voted for me for the uh, for the for these fantastic um, potty potty of the year, guest of the year. Thanks very much for that. I'll. Uh, it's going to be very, very well cherished. So yeah. And, uh, yeah. So thanks for thanks for all the people who did actually vote for me. These are yeah. pretty awesome. So yeah, thanks right. very much. No, but thanks yeah. for coming back. No, thank we'll you. Sorry it took me so long. We've no, just, that's all right. It's tough bloody, during with, the season with and bloody, with COVID. all the COVID stuff, the protocols yeah. we have. We just yeah, it's bloody. It was hard to actually get back in terms of yeah doing actually 
getting here. The, yeah. the stuff that we had to go through. So, I mean, we actually had it planned, didn't we? And then all of a sudden we got... You had to go to Melbourne because like it looked like sudden, the, yeah, the borders, borders were going to shut. Close. And yeah. we, had it, we had it planned and ready to go yeah. in like May or something like that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was months ago. It was months ago. And, and then all of a sudden we got our, our season, our whole, our whole team got shifted to Melbourne. Yeah. And just went from there. So I would have been on much earlier. I think you were like just probably on the verge of coming back and playing. Yeah, I was. I think yeah. it was like there was two, a week or two before I was back to be playing. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I'm... We had it already set, ready to go for us, yeah. and then all of a sudden I had to <laughs> shift over to Melbourne for two weeks or yeah. a week and a half. Well, that's so. you know that's that's life now. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks heaps. Thank you. And um, yeah, always we'll a pleasure. Thank see you. how you go. I might have you back next year if you uh, if you back it up. Yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you, good. Thank you very much. Welcome to